two toolpaths and about five minutes. That's all it takes to CNC stack text. Sounds crazy? Well, most people seem to overcomplicate this with multiple toolpaths and methods that are just very hard to follow. Today, I'm gonna super simplify it. Two toolpaths, one clean method, and all of this can be done in under five minutes. And bonus, there is a way to cut your CNC time by a lot, like two thirds off. But you're gonna have to stick around for that one. I'm gonna be using VCAF Pro, but the principle should be more or less the same if you're using different software. First thing I'm gonna do is create a new file. And for this example, I'm gonna use 300 millimeters by 150, set my data position and click OK. Now, first thing to do is create some layers and we're gonna distinguish these with different colors. So first layer is gonna be the frame and we're gonna make this one green. And then we're gonna click add new layer. This is gonna be a text layer and we'll name this one text top and we'll select a different color for this one. Let's make this one red. Then we're gonna add a second text layer and you guessed it, this one is text bottom. And then make this one maybe blue. And then we create a third layer and we'll just call this one combined. And since it's black, it's a different color so we don't need to do anything else. Now, make sure we click onto the frame because that's the layer that we're gonna work on next. Then we're gonna use the rectangle tool, click on one corner and drag it all the way to the opposite corner and let go. So that'll create a rectangle. Then we can just click close and that's done. Next, we're gonna do an offset. So click on the offset button located down here and we're gonna go inwards and I'm doing 10 millimeters on this one. And since we are not gonna need the rectangle that we just created after this step, we might as well just click delete original and then click offset and click close. And there we go, that's our frame done. For the next step, we're gonna create our text layers. So what we're gonna do is go up to our layers, select text bottom, then I'm gonna select the draw text within a vector box tool. And the only reason I'm doing that is because it gives me more control over the text itself. So first word I'm gonna type in is true. And as you can see, that takes up a lot of space, so we need to make some adjustments here. First thing I'm gonna do is change the height. I'm gonna make that 70, and then the width, let's go with uh, 220 on this one. And then down here, I'm gonna go to the horizontal stretch and select stretch kerning. And what that's gonna do is just space out the letters so that there's a little bit more space in between and that's gonna allow my end mill to reach in between those letters. And I'll show you that in just a second, how you can actually measure and check that. Now we're gonna do the second word and you guessed it, it's gonna be false. So again, way too big, we need to make some changes and I'm gonna go with 260 on this one, make the height the same. And again, for the horizontal stretch, same thing, and then click close. Now from here, I can actually move these around and then just space them so that everything looks good. And I also wanna make sure that I leave enough space between the two words so the same end mill can actually fit in between those two. That's it done for the bottom text layer. Next, we're gonna go up to the top text layer and select that. And for this one, we're gonna use the word or. And again, we're gonna change the height to 70. And for the width, I'm just gonna go with 120 on this one, or let's make it 122. And same setting for the horizontal stretch. Just something to note, you can actually use different fonts here. It doesn't have to be the same. And then you can move this around to wherever you like. And if I click off of this, you can see we got our blue layer which is the bottom layer and the red layer, which is the top layer. Now I'll take a quick look at this. If I zoom in on this area up the top here and I click on the measure tool, I can go to the edge of this letter and then just go across to this one, click again, and that'll give me a distance of 4.5 millimeters, which is perfectly fine for the end mill that I'm gonna use. And the last thing we need to do in this step is select both layers, right click, and then just go all the way down to where it says copy to layer and then select combined. And what that's gonna do is copy both those layers to the combined layer 
So if I click off of them, you can see everything is now black, which is exactly what we want because this now matches the combined layer that we have down here. The next step is to weld everything on the combined layer together. Now, this is pretty important. So what you need to do is go up to your layers and deselect or deactivate the top text and the bottom text. You just want the combined layer, so click on that to activate it and then head down back here again. Next, you just select your text like this and then head over to the edit objects and click on the weld command. You will be presented with a pop-up like this and then just click replace. And this is what you should end up with. So while we are here, just right click anywhere and click on group objects. And one thing to note is you do not want your layers to move around after this step. If they do, it's not gonna line up and it's not gonna work. And one more important thing, if you are finding this useful in any way, please help me out and hit that like and subscribe button. In the next step, we're gonna create our two toolpaths. So to do that, we're gonna go over to our toolpath commands by clicking on this button. And while we are up here, we're gonna change our layer selection. So make sure that you got frame and top text layer selected and deselect the combined layer. Once that's done, you just select both of these and then go over to Pocket Toolpath. Now to do this, I'm only gonna need one end mill, so I'll remove this one. And then I'm just gonna change the cutting depths. So we're gonna start at zero at the surface and we're only gonna do like a four millimeter deep cut on this one. And I'm not gonna change any of these settings just to keep things simple. And then we just need to give this toolpath a name. So let's go with text top layer and click calculate. To make things easier to see, I always like to color my toolpaths and we'll go with something like white and then we'll just click on view visible toolpaths. And that is our first toolpath done. Now we can close this and go back to 2D view right here on the left and we're gonna change our layer selection again. Click on that, deselect the text top layer and make sure that the combined layer is now active. So you got frame and combined layer like this. Select both of these and go back to pocket toolpath. Now, once you click on that, you'll notice that it's already populated with all the settings we just used, which is great. And the only thing that we're gonna change here is our cutting depths. So remember, we already done four millimeters deep. So we're gonna start at four millimeters and then add another four for a combined eight. And then we're just gonna give this toolpath another name. We'll call this one text bottom layer and click calculate. And again, we're gonna change the toolpath color, make it something different like black. And then we're gonna click preview all toolpaths. And that is how simple it is to create text on text using only two toolpaths. I did say that I'm gonna show you how to save a heap of CNC time. So, Take a look at this. As is, my two toolpaths here are gonna take me about one hour and 40 minutes to complete, which is not too bad, but it's not great either. So here's what we can do. If we go back to the first toolpath, double click on that, we can go to select, and we're gonna add a quarter inch end mold. Then we click calculate, and repeat the same process for the bottom toolpath. Click select and then find your quarter inch end mill. Click select again and calculate. So now we've got four toolpaths, which technically is the same two toolpaths we started with. And we're just gonna run each one twice, each time with a different end mill. What that's gonna allow you to do is clear away all of this material a lot faster. How fast? Well, that saved me at least one hour and 10 minutes. And that's without the time it actually takes to swap out those two end molds. And speaking of saving time, if you are planning on painting your signs, then this is definitely the video you should watch next. And I'll see you on the next one.